Just remember, the stuff presented by this creepy bear is from the Evolution 101 website, written by the Understanding Evolution Team. Commentary by Rentafriend2000. That's me! They begin with a simple definition. The definition. Biological evolution, simply put, is descent with modification. Definition fail! This is put a little too simply. Everything that lives is descended from something of its own kind, and most are not clones of their parents, save a few bacteria and other wee terrible basties. This weak sauce definition means that you, being descended from your parents but being not their clone, are an example of evolution. This definition could be restated, biological evolution is any living thing giving rise to another living thing which is not its identical clone. Kind of narrows the possibilities a smidge too much if you ask me. Also, I refuse to say I evolved from my mother, that, that sounds weird. Furthermore, they don't say what kind of modification. I think we'd all agree that a normal four-legged dog giving birth to a one-legged puppy named Lil Brother would be descent with modification, but hardly a big evolutionary leap forward. Keep in mind that we need to define the process so that bacteria can change over time into wolves and cabbages and everything in between. Little brother just ain't getting the job done. This definition encompasses small-scale evolution, changes in gene frequency in a population from one generation to the next, and large-scale evolution, the descent of different species from a common ancestor over many generations. Evolution helps us to understand the history of life. Once again, since they don't define change, how's that for a popular bait-and-switch America? Then it can mean any change at all. Let's see, uh, encompasses changes in a population, or changes between kinds, so evolution is anything that ever happens to living things. Hmm. Yeah, this puts the term on par with other excellent pieces of scientific terminology, such as stuff, junk, things, and sorta. Good job, team! Let's stick those words in the glossary in the back of the book, and then we'll all break for a biscotti. Why does a team of PhDs come up with such a weak definition? For three reasons. One, because when you define evolution too clearly, you start to see a whole whack of examples of things not evolving, like living fossils, or doing the opposite of what evolution needs to do, such as genetic entropy, extinctions, vestigial organs, etc, etc, etc. Two, the evidence only supports the first category they provide, small-scale changes within existing kinds. If the definition was clear enough to differentiate between what they call microevolution and macroevolution, you would quickly see there's no evidence for macro, which is the place where creationism and evolution actually differ. We don't balk at natural selection or Mendelian genetics. We invented those. We just refuse to call them evolution when they fit so well into the biblical creation account. Because with this definition, when creationists say they don't believe in evolution, you can mock them for believing that living things never change when it's obvious they do. <laughs> Evo win! Also, helps us to understand the history of life seems to be their way of saying, is the religious dogma with which we will interpret the data, if we bother with any. You'll know that the way they wrote it, evolution is not built on their understanding of the history of life, but rather is the lenses through which they will look at the past. Do you see the difference? Uh -huh. It's not a conclusion. It's a dogma. So, once again, their definition above just isn't cutting it. It's like I need a Darwin English dictionary up in here. What evolution must mean in order to be a useful term is a definition like this. An unguided natural process by which genetic information increases, resulting in additions and beneficial modifications to phenotype and or behavior, that helps the individual to survive, reproduce, and pass on that genetic information. This is evolution the process. Evolution the worldview is this. All living things are the result of the evolutionary process going back in time through common ancestors, until arriving at a first universal ancestor, a single cell, which itself was the result of matter plus time plus chance, meaning that all life is merely a chemical process beginning with rain falling on rocks. Oh, look at this. We're in the first section and I'm already doing these people's job for them. I hope they remember this when picking employee of the month. They already forgot to give me my Darwin Day bonus. Join us next time for part two!